Hey everybody, Scott Weichel, you're listening to My Kind of Country here on Fish Creek Radio. We have listeners from all over the world, and we also get contacted from artists all over the world that are doing traditional country music. And uh, this lady was kind enough to get in touch with me and send me her music, and it went on the air right away because she absolutely knocked me out, both with her songwriting skills and her beautiful voice. And uh, through the wonders of technology, we have been able to uh, get her on the phone with us all the way from New Zealand. Please welcome Siobhan to My Kind of Country. Siobhan, hello. How are you? Hello, Scott. I'm fine. How are you? I am wonderful. It is a pleasure to have you on the show, and I want to thank you so much for reaching out to me and sharing your music. I, I want to thank you so much for the opportunity. It's so nice to have someone uh, support an in, in the artist's way, it's just absolutely mind-blowing. Well, we're happy to do it. And somebody that's carrying on traditional country music is uh, is tops in my book. There's no doubt about that. Let me uh, uh, let me ask you the obvious first. Uh, how does a uh, an artist in New Zealand get into classic country music? <laughs> well, that's that's kind of a tricky story because I'm I'm not New Zealand by birth. Um, I, uh, I was born in Australia, and uh, I, I grew up in, in South Africa, and we moved to New Zealand. And my family always had, well, my dad in particular, always had country music and, <clears throat> and people like Elvis, and I love Elvis. And my mom always had Patsy Cline, and, and Patsy was one of the very first people I, I listened to. And until the age of about 12, 13, I would always try and emulate her and I used to love impersonating her and as I got older I started developing my own voice but I people still tell me there's still very small inflections in there which are to the people that got me interested in country music wow that's really awesome but well, folks uh, if you do hear some little digital things we're uh, we're doing this through an internet connection and uh, we several different applications to make this happen so my apologies if uh, if you hear some funny noises here and there <laughs> it's it's probably rick actually he's sitting here too <laughs> well you have an album you have an album out called reflections of a fool and folks it's available on cd baby and you can also uh, check out siobhan on uh, facebook and contact her and listen to her wonderful music and the song if you've been listening to my show and obviously you have been or you wouldn't be tuned into this interview you have heard me play a lot of her music already and uh, one of the songs that i really like and it uh, i understand it is a number one uh, radio indie alliance uh, uh, chart single for you called reflections of a fool yes uh, that that was so amazing i mean Reflections of a Fool, I actually was very lucky to get into contact with two men by the name of uh, Mike Jones and Jerry Howard, and they actually live in Nashville. Oh, okay. And uh, I, I got I got this song from them, and we've actually been working together to hopefully, in their words, win a CMA. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think you certainly deserve it. This, You know, this material is... Uh... It's fantastically written. It's uh, wonderfully produced, and uh, you you have an amazing, just a powerhouse voice, and uh, you can really tell it comes right from your soul. Oh, thank you so much. I, yeah, uh, Mike Jones and Jerry Howard have some incredible, incredible songs, and they've been very gracious in giving me some more. So there'll be more coming from them and myself very soon. I hope to get back into the studio in around June and, and do some more. Um, I also have other songs that weren't written by them, but uh, by a friend of mine in Texas. His name is Terry Stevenson, and he wrote, I'm not sure, I think you have them. Um, it's like songs like Ice in My Glass and If You're Gonna Leave Me, Fiddles and Wine. He wrote those ones. And my other original Life's Reflections, I wrote uh, uh, independently on the album, which was my uh, outlook on life if I ever sat down and thought, one day, hey, I should have done music, what would have happened, what could have happened, that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, that's really cool. Um, who, who are the musicians on this? Did you record this in, in New Zealand, or was this recorded in the States? I actually recorded this album in New Zealand, and my producer is a man by the name of Mike McCarthy, and he runs Orewa Studios, uh, uh, sorry, Manuka Studios in Orewa, which is a suburb here. And he actually uh, works for Sony Music. 
and he produces the album and he is just absolutely fantastic because when you go in there he will sit there and make you sing the song right next to him so he can hear the little inflections in your voice and he creates the music right around the little inflections and the tones and it really complements your voice when it's done oh that's a great way to do it i've talked to so many artists that uh they go in and record live with a band as opposed to having the tracks done ahead of time just for that just for that reason you get a much better recording that way yeah yeah totally and it's nice to have someone who understands country music because i mean for for me when it comes to country you've got to understand it you've got to feel it you've got to love it to be able to deliver it in a way where it's going to affect people and touch people and make people want to listen to it amen Right there is why, I, that's why I'm a fan of yours, right there. You just put it all in a nutshell for me. <laughs> I want that in a plaque. I, yeah, wall. we need a plaque on the wall for that. That's, uh, now I know why I really like you. <laughs> that's fabulous. Well, yeah, I just feel that if you're going to make music, it's it's got to come from right inside your belly. You can't be singing it for the, the sake of singing it. If you're going to sing, I always say sing. Siobhan, are you, um, in the United States, we're seeing a, a really large division between what they call uh, new country music and traditional country music, and um, mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a very big resurgence of traditional country music and people that are really tired of the, you know, the new country, which is really sounds more always pop and rap and dance. Um, yeah. What's the country music scene like there, where you live? Um, the country music scene... Uh... I guess in a way it's still very old-timey because it, it, the the support system for it isn't really that big. When you we have country music clubs here, and when you attend them, it, it's mainly the the very elderly that attend, and so the songs that you're still getting are still the traditional ones. But even when the younger people go, there doesn't seem to be a very tight-knit support for traditional because. The when when the young people head in, they try and do something that sounds a bit traditional, yet modern, and there's no support for it. So, unless you're in a clique here, you're not really looking at a, a very popular genre. It's more, I'd say, um, reggae and more hip hop this side of the world. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's why I'm trying to branch out more overseas u.s side because uh, i just like you said uh the traditional sound is is coming up more and i was hoping to make a mark that way because this side it just isn't really happening in the music scene here well you're definitely forging the way in this you know this album and this material i i think if this can't do it nothing will because it's uh, it's very very strong very strong album thank you so much i really appreciate it it's so nice to have someone support it because I've, I've faced so much um, flack and, and criticism and abuse with with the music scene here. And that's what, another reason why I've branched out because there's uh, unless you're in that clique, you, you're kind of the outsider. So I'm, I'm the outsider at the moment. <laughs> well, I would, I would guess that once... Uh... Once more people hear your music, you're going to start getting a lot of airplay both in the United States and also in Europe. Um, we have a tremendous uh, listenership over in, in Europe and England and, uh, you know, Germany, Norway, all those countries over there. They mm-hmm. really like traditional country music, and a lot of the older stars still go over there and do a major tour. You know, it's very popular. Yeah. So I, I really expect to see uh, see you getting a lot of movement uh, both here and, and over there in Europe as well with this music. Yeah, well, I've, I've been very lucky, actually, because I have um, two people, um, but, uh, two promoters, actually, who, who are doing stuff for me without any kind of remuneration because they just want to bring traditional country back. And her name is Juanita Ford. And then there's also a man in the Netherlands by the name of Bjorn Hasselberg. And they send my music out to nearly, in total, 500 stations worldwide. That's awesome. Well, something's got to be working because you had a uh, uh, the Radio Indie Alliance charts. You had uh, Reflections of a Fool hit number one on there, so something's got to be working. I did, and, and funny enough, uh, there's also another chart, um, the Joyce Ramgatti Top 200 Airplay Artists. <clears throat> and um, I got into, about three weeks ago, I got into the number one position on the Top 200, and currently I'm sitting at number four of the Top 200, 
and Reflections of a Fool has gone from number nine to number 14. So it's stayed on the charts for two weeks now. So I'm really proud of that as well. As well you should be. That's great. Well, that just proves you the listeners are out there and you're finding them, you know. And uh, we're, yeah, totally. we're going to help you keep doing that here. I can guarantee you that. As I've said, I've, I have been playing your music ever since you sent it to me, and we were finally able to do this interview. And, and I know that uh, we're going to be able to send a lot of people your way because this is good stuff. Oh, I really appreciate it. I, I, I've been working so hard. I remember being four years old, and my, my mom and dad and I would go to my uncle's house, and we would jam there until like two o'clock in the morning and they'd say to me what do you want to do when you grow up Siobhan and and everyone would laugh at me because I would turn around and say one day I'm going to sing on the Grand Ole Opry <laughs> <laughs> well I don't see any reason why that won't become a reality for you I think that would be fabulous <laughs> oh well fingers and, fingers and toes are crossed at the moment <laughs> <laughs> well obviously your family is very supportive uh, is do you have other people in your family that are musical besides yourself my my mom back in the day, um, her brother used to be a singer in uh, Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. He was a guitar player, and they were in a band called Countdown, and they were on the hit parade in in South Africa and Zimbabwe. And my mom also used to appear on TV with her other brother and do country music there. And my dad, well, he can sing, but he <laughs> he he gets a bit um shy to do so nowadays because uh, he reckons the big boys don't sing <laughs> <laughs> well you tell him if he enjoys it keep right on singing there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> i know in south africa uh jim reeves uh did a lot of tours over there back in the 60s and was extremely popular and uh, had, a, had a huge listenership over yeah. there yeah yeah that's great. He did. My my dad was my dad was actually very fortunate enough to actually see Jim Reeves when he came to South Africa. Oh wow! And he also got to see people like uh, Ch uh what was it? Ch uh, Chid Atkins, uh, um, Dwayne Eddy, uh, who else came? Floyd Kramer. He got to see all those people when they came to South Africa. Oh wow! That's great. That's great. Those are legends. And they all get played on my show still to this day, without a doubt. That's fantastic. Oh, their, their music, their music is timeless. You you can't put you can't put an age in it. You can't say it's not current because I, I listen to songs of Jim Reeves today and the lyrics. I mean, for me, lyrics are the things that are, are absolutely crucial. And the lyrics of the songs from back then just speak volumes. You are so right. I could not have said it better myself. I knew I really liked you. Did I say that yet? Can we get another <laughs> plaque? We need another plaque, yeah. I really like you too. <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic. Well, you did a few songs on this album that uh, I, th I thought you knocked out of the park. And, uh, I, you know, besides the originals on here, my own peculiar way, the uh, the title cut, it just blew me away. Mm -hmm. You really did an awesome um, job on that one. Thank you. Well, I have to I have to commend my dad for that because my dad my dad is oh sorry <laughs> my my dad is kind of like my uh, go to like producer arranger and we sit together and he helps me pick songs and he'll tell me this is what we think it should have in it the steel guitar should be prominent it should pull you out it should grab you from the get go. Well, your dad is spot on, definitely, and I yeah. believe that's a, a Willie Nelson. I believe wrote that song. Am I correct? Yes, and, yeah. and Connie Smith covered it, and that was the first time I heard it. Was when Connie, I heard Connie Smith on YouTube, and I absolutely loved it. And I thought, "Oh, this song grows. Can I do it?" And I would practice every day and keep going and keep going, very, very, very timidly, until my dad said, "Sing it." And I was like, "Oh, dear Lord." <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope I hope Connie gets a chance to hear it because you knocked it out of the park, and you did a great oh, job that, on. That, Go ahead, I'm sorry. That would be so amazing. You did a fabulous job on uh, Lynn Anderson's Rose Garden, and of course Patsy Cline's Crazy. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I I I wanted to create a different sound on Rose Garden because we all know that intro, that very very iconic kind of violin intro, and. When I, when I do covers, what I like to do is I like to put my own stamp on it. So when a song starts, someone goes, oh, it's different, and wants to sit down. But, you know, I just feel if you hear the, that intro, you're like, oh, yeah, she's doing the cover of it. But 
that when they listen to this one, it's like, oh, she's doing her own style and own version of that song. Well, I think in, in a sense you made the song your own by doing it that way, but you also maintain the integrity of the original. You know, I've I've heard covers sometimes that it's, it's just a nightmare to listen to because they go so far away from what they originally were. But you you know you manage to make it your own with your own feel, but you also maintain that integrity. Well, thank you very much. I I, I respect country music too much to to well, let's say to murder it. And I mean, those people are legends for a reason. And even if I put a small stamp on a song and still keep it in the integrity of the song, I am happy. Well, <laughs> you mentioned earlier, you know, there's there's staying power in this in the in the lyrics and the music of this kind of music that you're just not hearing nowadays. And what you have done here in this project has staying power. And, you know, it's something that people are going to be listening to for years to come. It's it's so well done. Oh, that means so much. I I'm 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 a person who. Who doesn't get lost for words very much, and just that kind of comment is just like my brain's like, thanks. <laughs> well, you deserve every word of it, and we're very proud to uh, to help promote you in any way we can, and we're going to keep playing your music. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure having you on the show, and like I said, uh, we're very proud to keep playing your music. My listeners are going to keep hearing it, and uh, you are welcome anytime on the show, anytime that uh, I can do anything to help promote, or if you just want to come on and say hey to everybody, we're happy to have you. Thanks so much for taking time to be on the show. Uh, thank you so much, Scott. I really do appreciate this. It is the, the best thing that I could have ever hoped for, getting this kind of exposure. And my thanks is, is not even, probably not even enough in my mind to give you. I just truly appreciate all of this. Well, I appreciate the wonderful music that you're giving to us. That's what it's all about. Well, Siobhan, I've already okay. played Reflections of a Fool at the beginning of the interview, but I have, I have kind of a tradition when I wrap up an interview, I let the artist pick the next song that we're going to play. So I'm going to let you pick the next song off of your album that we're going to play right now. <laughs> okay, well, how about we play My Own Peculiar Way? All right. Perfect. Here is Siobhan, My Own Peculiar Way. It is the title cut from her new album. Folks, get it at cdbaby.com. And if you are a fan of traditional country music, I know that you are. You wouldn't be listening to my show. It's a must-have. Siobhan, thank you so much for being on My Kind of Country. <laughs> 